Martin says his goal is to create the open source economy, an efficient economy that optimizes both production and distribution while providing environmental regeneration and social justice. Please welcome to the Connecting for Change stage, Marcin Jakubowski. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Callum. Let's see, is this lav on right now? Yeah. Okay, thanks. I'm glad to be here. So my name is Marcin. I was born in Poland, and this is... Slides, please, okay, no, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, you know that, okay. So, this is the town where I was born, my hometown, and many of my childhood memories are those of Poland's history. So, my grandfather was in the Polish underground that was during World War II, derailing Ger German trains. My grandmother was in a concentration camp. And my typical memories of the time are frolicking in a playground, as any child would, but also waiting in line for food because food was rationed. This was the time when tanks were rolling down my streets, and no, this was not a parade. This was martial law time in Poland behind the Iron Curtain. It was a clear state of material scarcity. When I was 10, my family moved to America. Things were much better. Lives transformed. Went to Princeton, University of Wisconsin, got a PhD in fusion energy. But at the same time, I never stopped thinking about the terrible things that happen when resources are scarce and people fight over opportunity. These memories fuel my belief in freedom. And I believe that true freedom, the most essential type of freedom, starts with individual ability to use natural resources to free ourselves from material constraints. Wherever material scarcity exists in a world we see, terrible things, hot spots, resource conflicts, debilitating economies, impoverished, isolated beings, powerless to live the full life that they want. Isn't it ironic that vast populations living in poverty are surrounded by the absolute abundance of natural resources, namely sunlight, rocks, plants, soil, from which all of the wealth of the economy comes? What stands between a human being and what all nature can produce is human created. It's all business made. So who in this village, for example, can access the money or even a place to buy a tractor to till the very soil that they live on? So the standard system of capital, production, distribution work only if they create enough artificial scarcity for profit, and that's the norm the world over. So I think we've got a big challenge in front of us, and that is producing true freedom by bypassing the roadblocks to artificial scarcity, to give as many people as possible the access to know-how and the right tools so that they can convert their environments, environments, abundant raw resources into the personal good and freedom. And I believe that the answer to this planetary pickle, which we haven't solved yet at all, is the open source economy. So an open source economy is where information flows freely and openly, so everyone has access at the most fundamental level to how to process raw materials into the life stuff of modern civilization. Each person has a chance to get involved, provide improvements, innovations, and contribute that all back to a common pool of human knowledge. Is it any wonder that open source is accelerating innovation every, in every corner of our lives? Imagine one brain, then a hundred brains, and then a thousand, and then fasten your seat belts. Even though open source is happening right in front of our eyes, many people still behave in denial of the basic proposition that increasing innovation starts with open collaboration. The patent system, trade secrets, and other forms of competitive ways stall innovation and economic health. Did you know, for example, that last year the spending on, by Apple and Google on patents exceeded spending on research and development of new products? But as open source picks up speed with the advent of the cloud, crowd collaboration, a ton of emerging open source platforms, it's become increasingly obvious that the open source economy is the next economy. In the network infrastructure alone, open source Linux servers have now dominated the marketplace, 
And the Open Source Hardware Association aggregates the active DIY and maker community to work at warp speed. A business strategist friend of mine told me he was asking not whether open hardware will be a player, but when will companies like John Deere, Caterpillar, or JCB in the UK be fundamentally disrupted by the kind of access to equipment that an organization like ours is providing? But ultimately, the question is much simpler than the debate whether open or proprietary will win. The simple question is, do we want an efficient economy that accelerates innovation and creates sustainable future for as many people as possible, as fast as possible? I say yes every day that I wake up with the roosters at our farm. So I started eight years ago formulating the open source ecology concept as an antidote to artificial scarcity. I started open source ecology. It's a social enterprise. So how would this efficient economy look? It would operate locally and totally autonomously, but freely utilize and share designs and knowledge globally. It would accelerate innovation, produce efficiencies, and decentralize natural resources, labor, capital. It would solve problems the minute they arise. Due to its micro self-funding productivity, it would be replicable, flexible, affordable. It would give back more to the land than it would take out. And most importantly, it would give time back into our lives. Hmm. I was pretty excited by this model. I could imagine how the reduction in the scale of production from global to local would bring about a possibility of ending resource conflicts, poverty, hunger. And I could imagine even a deeper effect on a personal level, personal autonomy, where we regain control of our lives, of our communities, and our world. If our time is liberated, we would have time that we can then use to care about the rest of the world. This follows Daniel Pink's notion that intrinsic motivation is about a type of autonomy that allows us to pursue mastery that is consistent with higher purpose. When this happens inside of people, the politics shifts from money and power as the key determinants of personal and, and political interaction to ethics and wisdom as the next force. Autonomy is a condition where the scale of an enterprise and the scale of a comprehensive economy is reduced to the micro scale, and in that limit, that is the scale of any land parcel. What is artificial material scarcity? When you really think about it, all the wealth we enjoy today for a modern standard of living relies on rocks, soil, sunlight, plants, water. These are all abundant, yet the productive mechanism of society is what makes it scarce, and artificially so. So if we now create the densest possible packing of productive information and technique onto the smallest operational scale, that will be the end of reliance on global systems, and it's made possible uniquely by the advent of the digital age. It's consistent with E.F. Schumacher's notion that societal organization simply breaks down after it reaches a certain scale. It's consistent with Gandhian economics. It cons it's consistent with Buckminster Fuller's livingry as opposed to weaponry. And it's consistent with Martin Luther King's desire for governance based on law that transcends the law of man. This is because political and legal systems are built upon economies and therefore resources, and a decent economy means decent governance. This is the case where autonomy, defined as productivity with absolute efficiency and transparency, gives us freedom to pursue mastery towards the higher purpose. Autonomy is what gives us the freedom to pursue ethics, where our cognitive surplus allows us to look farther behind than our mere survival. So to start this ball rolling, I turned in my plasma physicist theoretical chalkboard for a tractor and a 30-acre farm in the middle of nowhere, Missouri, and went to work. OK, but then my tractor broke. So I paid to get it repaired. Then it broke again. And pretty soon, I was broke too. So 
I realized that the truly effective, low-cost tools that I needed to start a farm and community just didn't exist. Aha, so tools are essential. So that made me arrive at the nuts and bolts of the open source economy, and that is what we're doing by building the Global Village construction set. It's a set of the 50 different industrial machines that it takes to build a small civilization with modern comforts. We simply take industry standards, convert them to simple, open source, modular, lifetime design products that meet or exceed industry standards at a fraction of the cost. More specifically, our machines are five times lower cost while embodying simplicity, modularity, lifetime design that make these about 50 times more cost efficient over their entire life cycle. Our means are collaborative production. Our business model is helping others replicate our enterprise, and the goal is mutually assured abundance. One feature, for example, of the set is that it can be packed into a 40-foot shipping container. This can be deployed even when there is no industrial economy to create an entire modern economy from raw land with as few as 12 people from local resources at no more than two hours of work per day. Does that sound outrageous? Impossible? Well, <laughs> it certainly flies in the face of how we live and what we think. Working hard means we work a lifetime of long hours to secure the comforts of life. Or perhaps you can't see, see yourself building a tractor, or building a micro, micro house, <laughs> or a brick press machine. But before you run away scared, you don't have to do this. But we will. Myself and a dozen others, maybe someone here in this room, I invite you to the experiment. The pioneers will trailblaze, and just a single data point of possibility will extend the index of human possibility, potentially to wide replication the world over, starting on a community scale. So let me turn to the physical reality of this. We started from raw land about six years ago and built a facility like this. We now have a 4,000 square foot fabrication facility where we build tractors, compressed brick presses, with which we then built this very facility. We also built a 3,000 square foot living unit and we're optimizing production such that an inexperienced team of six people with leadership oversight built that brick press in four days. That was just a few weeks ago. And now we aim to build the same in one day. And the economics, <laughs> yeah. There's some real economic significance that we're seeing and, and something like 5,000 per day earnings because the materials are 4,000 and the product sells for about 9,000. Here we're getting our CNC torch table up and running. We built our iron worker machine to, as the core of custom fabrication and metal cutting, our own hole puncher, heavy duty drill press, cold saw, CNC circuit mill, and we're becoming quite efficient. We aim to build a CEB, compressed earth brick living unit, on a two-day time scale for 12 by 12 foot modules with double brick walls and straw insulation. We are trenching and digging with our tractor. We just got our open source dimensional sawmill for the first run. And we built other machines, like a micro tractor, Supersized string trimmer, trencher, hydraulic power unit, key line plow, and salt pulverizer. And we're just beginning, but we're reminded every day that we've got a lot to learn. But we know where we're going, and that's the open source economy. So here's the current plan. First, we developed the, the 50 Global Village construction set tools. We're right now upgrading our infrastructure for collaboration and development so that we can go into truly rapid development in 2014, 2015. And that fabrication facility that you saw, we're aiming to show that we can generate 80,000 per month by product sales through collaborative production and make it also highly replicable, scalable operation. So then we can scale these facilities like MAD, and that's the business development side of the whole package. It starts with teaching people. The mod model is to scale to a number of facilities worldwide, creating the OSC incubator, where we would teach people deep immersion training for about two years. 
And these distributive enterprise fellows follow the change model that education should include entrepreneurship. So then we scale to 104 incubators worldwide. After the first 12 fellows, another 12 fellows class, small and manageable, keep, it, keep the class size small. And each of these would, would contain a significant research and development arm so that you're really combining to form a formidable open source product development pipeline the world over. Then we can replicate like McDonald's. So the change model is that simply efficient open source production yields the 50 times cost reduction over, over lifetime compared to industry standards. Our, our brand is about generating absolutely responsible production. The education model is entrepreneurship as a force of change. The autonomous infrastructure allows for zero overhead operation. And therefore, a combination of efficient enterprise best practice, enterprise training, autonomous, autonomous operation. We're talking about designing this for huge scalability. To build the open source economy, in reality, we're, we're building this to scale. Our goal is decentralized production, decent production for short. And that's not a political ideology. I'm just talking about a business case for efficient enterprise where the traditional concept of scale becomes irrelevant. Our new concept of scale is about distributing economic power far, far and wide. And our metric of, of success is the number of independent replications of the GVCS tools and the whole package. So this actually shows how we've done since 2008 through 2012. We have built a total of 62 prototypes as the community. In 2011, last year, we had the first ever replication. Someone in Texas replicated the brick press completely from our open source plans independently. And this year, we had 13 more replications. So we're on our way to grow. There's also a social component to this, and that means how do you optimize global collaboration with a bunch of wildcats to generate a design, generate designs build out in many locations worldwide? We're just using very simple tools like wikis, Google Docs, SketchUp, plus other open source tools, which reduce the barriers to entry so that anybody can literally participate. We start the process with OSC specifications, meaning the simplicity, lifetime design, modularity, design for fabrication. We focus on the modularity for the quickness of the builds and simplicity of design. It's like Lego blocks, which, where you build upon modules. And that clearly applies to structures, but also could apply to things like electronics, where little bits is an example of an electronics toolkit that people can plug and play with. And we're scaling that, that up to power electronics, like induction furnaces, inverters, welders, and others. We're using collaborative production where our goal, as I mentioned, is to build a brick press in one day with eight people, where we got down to four days the last time. So where are we with all this today? We're currently scaling our organization, regrouping, reorganizing, really transitioning from vision to institution. Just two years ago, we were on a 1,500 per month budget, and now we've got half a million dollars to work with. We're building a team, creating strategy, structure, and process. And we're also feeling the growing pains. It's not easy. We're recruiting people such as remote designers, on-site full-time people, and volunteers for dedicated project visits. So I welcome any of you to apply. Our work is about regenerating the world around us. It's about cleaning up our economies so that we're not simply forced to steal from others by producing within our own communities. I invite you to join us, especially if you're, if you're a skilled engineer, retired executive, looking to make a difference in the world. See my TED talk if you haven't seen it. It's actually quite popular with over a million hits by now. You can download a copy of our Civilization Starter Kit, which contains now, that's version 0.01, .01, with the plans for the tractor, brick press, pulverizer, and power unit. You can build it yourself. All the documentation videos and, and CAD and everything is there. And also, you can sign up as a true fan. Support us at $10 a month. We have about 350 people like that, people paying from 100 to, uh, people paying from like a 10 to 100 bucks a month. And so the true fans, 1,000 true fans concept originated by Kevin Kelly. So also talk to me. I need mentors. Our team needs strategic review, process development, technical review. 
operations, everything. So nobody said that building the world's first open source civilization would be easy. But with the right social process, it can be fun. We're testing the limits of what we all can do to make a better world. Thank you.